Oh, yes. Mamdusco Meat Processing Factory. Anno 1820 or whatever. Something like that. Just a while ago. Just a while ago, really. Uh, emergency shutdown in place. Always the same signs. Always the same message. I guess that's why there's no people, because there's an emergency shutdown in place, and I just kind of entered. And also there's that, like, monstrous pig dude. But, you know, maybe he works here. Maybe he's just one of the employees who got stuck on the wrong floor and then he became hungry and that was the first food he saw in ages. Because they eat people. These men, Professor, these so-called men of vision, they would shackle the masses to a wheel and turn it till their backs break. All for that opiate, the lure of profit. These fools who lackey them, these priests, these officials, this government... They make pigs of us all. But what solution, my dear man? How to break a cycle? You cannot simply remove the promise of a better world for these unfortunates. In the workhouses, in the orphanages, the belief in heaven is surely the only sucker one can find. We do not need to wait. We can bring forth paradise now. We can speed the passion. With only a small sacrifice, we can hold the apocalypse. With just a small sacrifice, we can free our shackles and deliver them to paradise now. Just a small sacrifice. Just one or two children. Billy and Jimmy. It's all that's required. But it's never good enough, is it? They're always going to ask for more sacrifices in the end. And you wouldn't want to risk that now, would you? Just going to take it slowly. Father of Enoch. Wasn't Enoch also like this dude from the Bible as well? Thinking about it, his name sounds familiar. I'm not familiar enough with religious documents to really make a stand on that, but I'm pretty sure there was a dude named Enoch somewhere in there. Pretty sure. I'm gonna take this chair with me. See if the chair knows. Oh, the machine started moving. Dude, I have a chair, and I'm not afraid to use it on that guy who ran away from me there. It's weird how everyone just keeps running away, even though there's just these awesome moving things everywhere. Goodbye, chair. It just never made any landing noise. I was, like, waiting for the plunk, but no. That chair fell into the abyss. It's infinitely deep. I can't even see the chair anymore. Like it's just gone. The chair is no longer in our world. Huh. Most bizarre. I can see your fireplace over there, but that's about it. I'm worried to use my torch now because of the things walking around this place. And that bothers me because I kind of want to be able to have videos which are not just entirely black but this game kind of opens up that opportunity to just release a bunch of black screen videos and everyone going oh so artistic so very artistic but our monster has left us our little devious creature has hidden elsewhere I don't know whether to go upstairs or downstairs. There are two options in front of me. The downstairs option contains my lovely chair. Well, those lights are breaking. I'm going upstairs. <laughs> I don't really want that chair anymore. Never worked very well anyway. I mean, let's be honest. It didn't work previously. So why would it work now? I'm not really sure how a chair would work, but, you know. And I'm guessing this door is locked, yeah. Of course it is. Of course the door is locked. Hear me, Mandus. I am compromised. Our contacts must be brief and occasional. Beware the wretches who populate this compound. The way you seek is under the pistons. When you meet the saboteur, you will understand everything. When I meet the saboteur, I will understand everything. But until then, the saboteur is just a mysterious creature. 
October 17, 1899. Each compartment is ergonomically designed with a feed-through design at one end. Feed-through at one end. <laughs> so the product naturally settles into a position ready for its stunning arms to collect to the skull. We used a natural static charge built up by the friction of the carts against the belt to build an electrical charge, which is contained within glass vacuum canisters at the sides of the stunning arm mechanisms and delivered along the stun arms via copper cabling. We have observed that, that the artificial lighting contained within these canisters seems to calm the product further. Post-stunning, the line tilts sharply to the vertical, the physics of the, which tips the stun product upwards to fall directly in onto the hook of the bleeding line. This hook passes normally through the haunch or thigh of the product, and from this point, we disperse with the belt and instead instigate a channeled floor, which creates a funnel allowing blood and byproduct excretions to collect and run to the fluid collection tanks. I'm glad that he wrote down everything of the entire system on several documents, which are all very, very far away from one another. This seems like a good system. This has always been a bit of a weird system in documents where just pieces of paper are just scattered everywhere like who thought it was a good idea to just scatter it into several pieces and then put it into very specific areas because that seems like an odd choice to put in your building if i may say so myself i wish i could leave this place just go outside and run away see what's out there explore the world but I'm guessing that's probably a dead end. That's probably a dead end too, but you know. I wish I could explore. I wish there were more paths than the very obviously given one. That's no good. That's no good at all. But yeah, so far, I really enjoyed the game. But I will say there's not really a sense of exploration anywhere because everything just seems to be a straight line to the end so far. Maybe later on they'll have like more diverging paths. Because in the original Amnesia game, you just kind of enter this hub where you could go into several different rooms. And in the end, you just did something with all the stuff in the different rooms. But you could at least sort of choose which room to enter. And in this game, it's more like follow the path forever and I don't know I'm not sure how I feel about it I'm not sure if it's better or worse but it doesn't seem better you know like I feel like I'm just walking the path of someone who wants to tell a story and not so much the path of exploration which is also kind of a problem that I had with dear Esther whom who, which was made by the Chinese room which are people that also worked on this game where you technically had areas to explore in that game but if it wasn't really on the given path there wasn't really a point like there was just nothing there and in this game you can also in, at in this game at least you have paintings and at least you can like move a lot quicker as well which helps a lot and you can jump <laughs> for one um, but I don't know it just feels like less of a search and more of a like less of a search for my children and more of just walking the path of a man who went on a very specific voyage because every door was locked and couldn't interact couldn't be interacted with are your furnaces shield i don't know hmm. i guess i'm gonna need to do something with this first do i have fuel I have anything I can do with those levers? Oh. I guess I'm gonna need to get the stuff out of the thing. The uh, coal out of the one room. This is number four, apparently. It has some coal in it. It's burning. It's going pretty well. Actually, no, I already turned on that thing, didn't I? So I don't think I even have the coal to put in there unless I can use that shovel in there. Five and six. Man, that's a dark room. Let's go in three first. And I'm guessing one and two are, yeah, they're over there. 
That makes sense. And I guess I can just put these in here and drop them and then close the thing and then bolt. Turn it on. My furnaces are fueled. Someone's making a lot of noise. I'm not really sure why they're doing that. Man, it really looks like you can go in here and then it's like, not quite, actually. <laughs> because nothing says good game design like invisible wall. Well, I guess it's not really an invisible wall. It's just a really tight space, but yeah. Let's go into the dark room. I don't really want to go into the dark room, but let's be honest. We don't really have a choice, do we? These don't seem fueled at all. That one does. That one doesn't. Number six. What does that say? No entry to the under pistons when machinery is at rest. So I guess this door is going to open the moment that I twiddle twaddle with the fiddle faddles. Do I need to have two specifically to fuel one? Or is one going to be enough? I could just put this. I thought I saw a pig here, but it said it's just wood. I'm just seeing pigs everywhere now. I'm just going a bit mental. Let's see if this is enough. It's not. I need another one, I guess. I wonder where I could find another one, though. I only saw one in the thing. Maybe there's another one in this bucket now. Like, <laughs> you would expect I'd just be able to use any of this, but no. No, the puzzle is find the movable thing in the large vat of non-movable things. That's the puzzle. So we're going on a voyage. To find the other thing. And God knows where that may be. <laughs> uh, this is like why it just feels a bit odd. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Because there is very obviously a shovel here in a large amount of coal. But it's just not good enough. You need to get that piece of coal. Because otherwise nothing happens. Journal entry. Oh. Lily's arms are made of steel. Lily's armor is silent. The pistons are silent. The plans are at rest. I must puke. I must puke the hornet's nest to open my way. Is that actually a thing? Oh, wow. The scale of these engines suggests a far greater work works than is visible from the surface. So my friend must be correct. And the larger part of this plant is underground. We are close to the Thames. Thames, not Thames. Thames. No wonder Flugness is such a risk. Like this name? has been one of the hardest things to grasp for me on the English language. Like, any name in England is just this, it just makes pretend letters and pretend vowels everywhere. It's kind of great. The fires are stoked. Assuming the same architect is responsible here with the chemical plant, I surmise that the centralized control system regulates and operates the pistons. It should be a simple matter of finding it and hoping the saboteur relented after simply extinguishing the fires. I do hope he relented. Otherwise, I'm going to be pissed. Was that thing here the entire time? I'm not actually sure. That's actually something very easy to miss, so I wouldn't be surprised if it wasn't there in the first place. My furnaces are fueled. Okay, that, that was it, I guess. Was that it? Was, was was there nothing more to this than pulling the levers? Like I was maybe expecting them to be pulled in a specific order or something, or maybe one not being turned on, but I'm pretty sure they're all stuck, so let's see, I guess. Oh, what? <laughs> That's not a door. Wait, is this entire room different? Or something? Hmm. Let's just go. Oh no. No, oh, it's just darker. Man, that was weird. I can't see anything there. I can't see anything here either because it's so bloody dark, but. Well, at least I have access to the bottom now. And this area. That's fun. Is there anything here? 
Oh, there's boxes. <laughs> I don't think there's really a point in being here, but, you know, if I ever need to hide, I can just hide inside this little pipe over here, because apparently it's not solid. Woohoo! Um, yeah, this, this is just a bit silly, isn't it? I wish I still had that chair. I just never lost it. Jump on top of these boxes. Start a new life. Box man. Why is this? Why? Like, why can I not jump on this box? It's just little things, but... There's just a lot of little things which are nudging me the wrong way right now, and they're all very much related to invisible walls, as they usually are, because... Was there really no better way of designing that, that you didn't need... That you... Like, is there... An, if you can avoid an invisible wall, wouldn't it be better to avoid the invisible wall? Like, right here... I wouldn't expect there to be a wall here. I would expect to just be able to trollop around in this coal. I don't really see a point to it doing it. But if I want to, then, like, why not, right? That's not an odd request, is it? That I want to be able to move to places where it seems I can move. But no, there's invisible walls everywhere. But, yeah, whatever. I'm just going to go. I'm just going to continue. Because, like, <laughs> yeah, there's so many. There is such a ridiculously large amount of them in this game. And it just seems unneeded a lot of the time. And I'm guessing that's the enemy music. Because that's the first music I've heard in a long time. And I've been seeing an enemy walk around here for a while as well. What did I see something there? Oh, it's just another piston, I think. I'm just gonna run. I'm gonna run. You know what? Whatever. I'm just gonna run. If I see anything, I'll just die. <laughs> like, whatever. I'm just gonna run. And if anything stops me, then I'll be stopped. That's my plan. It's not a very thorough plan. It uh, doesn't really take good preparations against anything that could go wrong. But there's a note here. October 21st, 1899. The product moves now into the bleeding... Into the bleeding. A system of spring-loaded blades are arranged here. Tension is built by a series of springs that run along the bleeding line, using the momentum of the product itself to build up the energy for the action ahead. The blades are released to the point of optimum tension as the product passes them. The combination of speed of release and the sudden stop against the rubber buffers at the side of the line sets the blade spinning rapidly enough to cut the throat of the product. It is a clean, sympathetic, and efficient process. The product then continues along the line, and the natural bleeding process is allowed time to occur. The blood collecting in the angled basin at the foot of the line. Secondary spring blades are positioned at two further points along the line. Should the mid-level rubber buffers continue to be manipulated in the form of a semi-bled product, thrashing or twitching these products, these movements automatically form the basis of the spring-loaded energy required to send the next bleeding blade into activity. So basically, things get cut, and that's cool. Things get cut a lot, and then they could cut some more. And then when you least expect it, they do some more cutting. Hello, Mr. Flashy Light. Thanks for flashing in my eyes so brightly and so shinily. Why doth thou flash in the night? Oh, that's not good. That's no good. So I can't really tell what it is, but you know. Doesn't matter too much, I guess. Ow. Okay, that they didn't expect that to hurt me, but there you go. Very know. My journal. The descent continues. The dark descent. What did that dark voice instruct me to do? Under the pistons, into the tunnel, and onto the bilge pumps. Find if the door should be locked. I will have to find another means of descent. I cannot trust him, but my path is set. I shall ignore those noises, that snuffling, these shuffling steps below me. I'll brave whatever lurks beneath, and I will save them. Uh, yeah, sure. I'll just jump down. It's not really very obvious health system in this game. Uh, again, because I don't have an inventory system, I guess, as well. Um, 
because back in the other games you would just have like a thing that said you are nearly dying and your blood is falling everywhere but in this game not so much april 30th 1899 the crate arrived this morning and i had it delivered directly to the workshop the body is remarkably remarkably preserved although there is a subtle yet nauseating stench of damp and rot it is humanoid in shape but it has suffered severe skeletal deformity Remnants of leather straps encased the torso, which is deformed, with evidence of substantial muscle mass and displacement. It is difficult to ascertain whether this unfortunate is the recipient of some barbarous surgery, barbarous surgery, or was burned before born. God, the U's and the O's look stupidly similar. <laughs> was born deformed in an attempt to force his gnarled body onto some semblance of humanity. Was made. What he is, I cannot tell, but I smell the orb upon him, and I suspect my greater uncle's presence in this curious condition. So it can be done. We can reshape the body into a tool, accelerate the processes of Mr. Darwin's evolution. But here, my great uncle and I part company. He chose men as the subjects of his experiments, but men are difficult to control and rotten with sentimentality. No, we require a new creature for our chattels. Loyal, clever, strong, and easily sated. So I guess this is kind of, so far to me, at least the most obvious connection to Amnesia, that his uncle is, like, Alexander, I guess? And that they use the power of the orb for stuff. And that the power of the orb was used to create interesting things. And not just used for opening doors. Compound X storage, date and danger, no naked flames, and it's locked. That's unfortunate. That could have been interesting. But alas, no passage for I, no passage for me. Mm. Wow. Uh, are you. Wow. The chair. <laughs> I did not expect to see that again, but wow, that is incredible. That's, that's hilarious. Okay, well, we got our chair, but no wonder I couldn't see it. It was all the way down here. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, that just left me completely speechless for a moment. Oh, um, well, there you go. So this is the previous room, I guess. Uh, if you run into it, you can just look through it. I guess that would have been hard to test because you had to walk to a dead end. And not many people walk to dead ends. They think, oh, a dead end, and then they stop. And I didn't know you can throw things by using the mouse wheel, but there you go. Apparently you can. That's an interesting one. Can I, walk, can I look through this one as well, then? Like, if I just jump for a bit. Yep. Yeah, this, this is just entirely non-solid, really. Well, it's, it's solid, just not enough of it is solid. <sighs> I think that's... I found things like that before as well, and I could just go through those, but, you know. Why would you make solid objects when you can make non-solid objects to preserve space or something? This chair is coming with me. We have done a mission at this. We are on a battle mission royale. What am I saying? I don't know. Oh. Chemical transportation. Well, I'll probably have to go in there. Yep. Right, you're joining me on a journey to a new life. If that chair is not still there when I get up there, I'm going to be very sad. In the nest of eggs, the factory is quiet now, stumbling the alley of wrench hung loosely from his hand, oil and grease dripping off it, looking like blood in half-light. The half-light, that is. Not just any ordinary half-light. No, my chair is gone. Man, that is so sad. That chair was my only friend. We went through a lot. And now my stupid little elevator is breaking. It's like this was made for chemical compounds and not people. Man, that's smelly. That's just complete smelly pants. Smelly pants McGee is what that is. And I don't accept it at all. <coughs> Listen to that cough. That's the cough of someone who just lost his best friend, who was coincidentally also a chair. And that person was me. And as such, I want to take a little break. Because we've done some stuff. 
and um, my voice is starting to give up. So, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it so far, and next time we play, we'll just go and mourn our lost friend, the chair. Bye-bye, everyone. <laughs>